Hi there, welcome to Z Online School. In this video, we're talking about magnetization. And you should be able to define magnetization and demagnetization by the end of this video. You should be able to know the methods that are used to magnetize magnetic materials, the methods used to demagnetize a permanent magnet. And at the end of this video, we've got study tips that will help you handle questions and understand concepts under magnetism better. How do we define magnetization? Well, we need to understand the word from which magnetization comes, which is magnetize. Magnetize simply means to make something metal behave like a magnet. Therefore, magnetization is the process by which a magnetic material is made to have magnetic properties. These magnetic properties are properties every magnet portrays. If you want to know more about them, check our lesson or video under Basics of Magnetism. Demagnetization is just the opposite of magnetization, meaning instead of having properties of a magnet, that material loses properties of a magnet. Therefore, Demagnetization is the process by which a magnetic material is made to lose magnetic properties. Now, how can you make something bear magnetic properties? Well, there are two kinds of ways we can do this. The first one is by stroking that particular magnetic material with a magnet or by using electricity to magnetize that material. Under stroking method, we're going to look at the two main ways in which a magnetic material can be made like a magnet. The first kind is single touch stroking. In this method, we get our magnetic material that we want to magnetize. The labels A, B show the ends where the poles will be, that is either a north pole or a south pole. Then we get our permanent magnet, which we're going to use in this method. This method consists you sliding this magnet along the length, lifting it upwards and coming back to the point you started from and repeating the process several times. This process might be repeated for about 40 or 50 times. And you should note that the side where the permanent magnet leaves this magnetic material want to magnetize is where we're going to start from labeling a pole. Hence, in this diagram, we're going to start from B. You should always note that the pole produced on that side where the magnet is leaving the magnetic material is opposite that pole being used. In this particular example, we're using the north pole to perform stroking. And therefore, on side B, we're going to have a south pole. The next kind of method is double touch. In this kind of magnetization, we're going to have two magnets being used to magnetize the magnetic material. You should note that the two magnets being used will have different kinds of poles being used in stroking. The one on our left has its south pole being used in stroking, while the one on our right side has got its north pole used in stroking. You should pay attention that these magnets are being moved in opposite directions. Therefore, after several number of times, roughly around 50 times, we're going to have this magnetic material magnetized. We're going to follow the same principle in giving the pores inside A and B names. If you can see, we said the magnet on our left has got the south pole being used. Therefore, side A is going to be north pole, while side B is going to be the opposite of north. The next method is the electrical method. In this method, we use a battery, which is usually a source of direct current. This is the current that can be used to magnetize a magnetic material. Another thing you should note is the core where the magnetic material is put. This core is scientifically referred to as a solenoid. 
Therefore, when you hear the word solenoid, just remember they're referring to the core where we put the magnetic material we want to magnetize. In this method, what magnetizes the magnetic material is the current that passes through the core, which creates a magnetic field, which later affects the magnetic material. Now, we go to the methods through which we can demagnetize a material. The first kind is heating. When we talk about heating, we're just referring to getting a magnet and putting it on fire or getting a magnet and introducing heat. After we do this, the temperature of that magnet will keep rising. It should be noted that the magnet will only get demagnetized once a certain temperature known as Curie temperature is exceeded. If this temperature is not exceeded, the magnet will still remain a magnet. However, if it's exceeded, it ceases to be a magnet. Repeated hammering is also another method of demagnetizing a magnet. If you no longer want something to be a magnet, you can just hammer it a lot of times and it will stop being a magnet. The effect of also dropping a magnet is similar to repeated hammering. If a magnet is dropped several times, it might be noticed that its magnetic strength will reduce. Last but not the least, we've got another way of demagnetization using electricity. Yes, we can demagnetize and magnetize using electricity. The only difference is the type of current we use. When demagnetizing, we use alternating current. Therefore, the magnetic field produced in the solenoid will be in a different pattern. And therefore, we're going to get our magnetic dipoles disturbed. And hence, the magnetism in this magnetic material or a magnet will be disturbed. Now, what are some things you should take note of? The first thing you should take note of is the difference in the currents that are used for magnetizing and demagnetizing. Never switch them and never confuse them. If you do this, you might get your question telling you to explain how the electrical method is used for either magnetizing or demagnetizing wrong. Another tip is this. When two similar poles are used in double touch stroking, the poles produced are called consequent poles. That is, instead of you using different poles of the magnet in double touch stroking, when you use the same kind, that means the left is a south pole and the right one is also a south pole. It means the poles that you are going to produce will be the same on both ends. And because they will be the same, they are called consequent poles. The third and final tip of this lesson is how you can locate your north pole in the electrical method of magnetization. If you can recall, we never looked at how we can locate which side is the north pole when we're magnetizing using the electrical method. Well, as you can see on screen, we use the right hand grip rule to locate which side is north. So let's say we had this diagram here. Our right hand will be gripped around this core that, that is formed. Now, you should always note that when using this rule, you should first locate the positive side of your cell. Once you locate the positive part of your battery or cell, you follow the electric wire where the electric current is passing through and keep following it until where it starts to form the coil. When you reach this part, you follow where your core passes. If it passes behind, you pass your four fingers behind the magnetic material and wrap them around the magnetic material. Then you stretch your thumb like the picture shows and that's the direction where the North Pole will be. In this diagram, the North Pole will be on our right side. However, if our positive terminal was on the other side, the North Pole would have been on the 
left side. This is because the electric cable will pass in front of the magnetic material. Thanks for watching this video till the end. If this video was helpful, consider giving it a like, subscribing to the channel if you haven't yet subscribed, and sharing the video to those people you think it might help.